every day. Hospitals, EMS services, and lay people across the globe use Zoll products to save lives. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Bang. I'm here to talk about the uh, emergency physician training um, of uh, palliative care. And this is not about uh, protocols, workflows that we are used to, all right? Um, I hope that you guys have been sort of a self-selected group that you are very interested in palliative care, and this is how we should actually go forward. I'd like to start my first slide with this. So, Dr. Noreen Chan, this is how we see you. Um, probably 10 years ago, okay? I hope that this will change after this presentation, right? And it's just not the emergency department. I think um, in the world of medicine, in the world of the community, in the world of the eyes, um, palliative specialists are viewed as, well, angels of death, yeah? So, okay, so we look at 2015 quality of death. Yeah. So where are we? We are at uh, number 12 mm, out of 80 countries. So this is, this is what I would actually tell, you know, like uh, as an example that you actually go home and show your mom your, uh, your uh, report card, say, mom, I'm 12 out of a class of 80. And your mom would be like, oh, oh well. You're not going to get a spanking? Definitely not because it's not a bad number. But you're definitely not going to get a banana split because there's nothing to celebrate about. Yeah? So the next slide, we look at the uh, Singapore. It is way towards the right side of the y-axis. This is uh, the income per capita. We are earning a lot of money. But in terms of the uh, quality of death, there's still a lot of room to improve. So what we aim for is somewhere above the red line. OK, so how shall we actually go forward? Obviously, by education. We start them young. Um, at the moment, we have uh, three schools of medicine in Singapore. And I was told that you know the uh, palliative training in, in undergraduates, probably about a day or two maximum. Yeah. Just about lecture, tutorials, and that's about it. But um, we're not here to talk about undergraduates, obviously. So education, I've divided into doctors, nurses, and also allied healthcare. Um, today, I'm going to concentrate more on the doctor side, but um, any of the nurses who are interested in palliative care, please approach me after the presentation. I'll give you another presentation on, on the nurses' uh, um, uh, education in this field. So first thing first, we, all of us have a smartphone. So we can actually access to online resources. And most of the online resources are actually free. So we always want cheap and good, but this is free and good. So fast facts, CAPC, Get Palliative Care blog, the Lien Center for Palliative Care, um, all these wealth of resources online that you can actually find. So internationally, we have all these things, and locally, we have Lien Center for Palliative Care. So you can just Google and go on to the uh, website and actually find a lot of online resources. And of course, it's, they are free. So in terms of the formal training, um, I'm going to divide it into three levels based on the, uh, the, the level of commitment that you're going to put in. And obviously, we start off with a very low commitment with a postgraduate certificate. Uh, you only have to go for a three-day program, five-day program, get a postgraduate certificate, get a bit of a taster of what palliative care is. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, the uh, postgraduate certificate later. Obviously, the second level, and this is the reason that, uh, that I'm, I'm here about, the postgraduate diploma, which is offered by NUS. And after this, that you feel like, oh, wow, this palliative care is probably my true calling. I want to do palliative care for a career. I want to be a dually accredited. Um, you can proceed to do master degree, um, which is offered internationally. But the master degree is not recognized in Singapore. The only one that is recognized is AST training, which is two-year or three-year full-time. Okay, we'll start off with the first one. Um, this is run annually um, by the Anne Center for Palliative Care as well as the Singapore Hospice <coughs> Council. It's a three-day course program, which is quite popular. I was told that it's always oversubscribed, and uh, obviously, this you'll be awarded with CME points. So, uh, come to the next one. Like I said, this is the reason that I'm here to give you a talk about. 
I am the second batch student of uh, um, graduate diploma for palliative medicine. Um, and this is a part-time one year, six, well, 18 Saturday afternoons, six clinical days, uh, tutorials, practical sessions, and uh, case write-ups and also uh, reflective writing. So it's kind of back to undergraduate things. Uh, it's, it's out of your own time. Um, and uh, for this, I like to digress a little bit. I remembered specifically Dr. Noreen Chan asked me probably a month ago and said, like, what was your aha moment? Why did you want to do this uh, palliative care and emergency medicine? That I couldn't give her a straight answer. I mean, I could have said, oh, wow, well, you know, the silver tsunami is coming. People are already old and they're dying. Um, you know, this is, you know, part and parcel, all these things. But there was no personal reason that I wanted to do it. I couldn't answer her. Then I went back and sat in front of my computer and thought long and hard and said, like, why did I want to do it? Then I thought very hard why I did emergency medicine in the first place. I like the beeping sound. I like the, uh, I like the, say, oh, uh, 12 minutes, trauma case, fall from height, and all these things. I love all that. And I thought, like, well, inherently, how you work in the ED uh, emergency department, speed is your currency. So palliative care, you need a lot of time. And I want a relationship with the family and as well as the uh, patient. So that is lacking that I find that I do not find in, in emergency uh, medicine that I'm practicing every day. But I then thought to myself that, oh, no, I don't want to see them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I just want to see them, you know, long but not too long. So that's my, my reason for, for doing palliative care and emergency. There you go, Dr. Noreen. <laughs> the, uh, the third... The third program that I'm going to mention about is uh, the one that Dr. Raki has gone to. Um, this is the EPEC EM program, which is run by uh, Feinberg School of Medicine uh, in Chicago. Um, I think this is probably something similar to the one that is locally run, but obviously this is uh, uh, done internationally. Uh, just another flyer. Then just a quick one slide to talk about other possibility for education in terms of uh, other universities. There's one in, in, in Australia, Flinders University. There's one in uh, Wales. And there's also the King's College London. All will actually offer postgraduate certificates, postgraduate diploma, and as well as a master degree. Oh, back to, so this is the last section of my presentation, um, where you've already done your postgraduate diploma, and then you feel like, OK, I want to be dually accredited, and these are the ways to actually get yourself accredited in Singapore itself. Two tracks, the specialist track and as well as the direct track um, into palliative EST, which is the advanced specialty training. And traditionally, if you already exit it, um, if you are a medical oncologist, you are a geriatric, uh, geriatrician or as well as an uh, internal medicine uh, physician, you could apply to palliative EST and then go through the track for two years. And of course, if you are a emergency physician, um, it is kind of a case-by-case -case basis. And obviously, uh, for the three-year track program, you need uh, MMED family medicine or MMED internal medicine. So that's all for the education. I'd like to end the, the, the presentation with one slide. And there was a take-home message that I thought hard and long, that um, how do we apply emergency, or uh, sorry, palliative medicine in emergency care. It is very difficult to change the mindset or, of the emergency physicians. This slide is actually aimed to, you know, CFOs and CEO, actually. Um, but from us, from an emergency point of view, or emergency physicians or nurses, it is very rewarding and very gratifying if you could actually establish a rapport with a patient and with the family. And of course, this would be the collateral. Intensive care unit costs much, much more money than palliative medicine. With that, I thank you for your time. <laughs>